So just a quick heads up, this video does contain flashing lights, so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, I suggest you click off. Also, this video contains spoilers. Watch the fucking show! So this is Konosuba. More or less. Our main character is this camouflage-colored guy named Kazuma, who, while walking home one day, is hit by Truck-kun while trying to save a girl. Or at least, that's what he thought. Turns out it was just a tractor, and he died from having a heart attack, and also pisses himself. And also, the doctors laugh at him. So... yeah... This is a horror anime. He then meets this goddess named Aqua, who tells him he can either go to heaven, be reincarnated as a baby, or get transported to a video game world to defeat the Devil King. To sweeten the deal, Aqua offers Cosmo to take any item he chooses to give him an advantage in the new world like every other isekai anime protagonist. But since Aqua is being a pretty big bitch to him, instead of choosing ultimate magical ability, his smartphone, or both, he decides to choose Aqua. So they both get sent to the RPG world and register as adventurers. And it turns out, unlike his other isekai brethren, there is not much special about Cosmo's stats besides him having really high luck. They then start their new lives as adventurers by becoming day laborers? And they live in a stable? Okay man, this is getting too real. So after pulling their heads out of their asses, they decide to go on a quest to hunt some giant frogs, but they realize they both fucking suck. So they decide to recruit more people to their party to help. The only one that shows up is this little girl named Megami, who I need to emphasize is fucking 14. I get older, they stay the same age. And it turns out she apparently watches Naruto religiously, and can cast a super powerful explosion spell, but it also injects Perk 30 into her system after she uses it. So Kazuma understandably wants to drop her, but she reveals her identity as an FBI agent, and forces Kazuma to let her into the party to keep him out of jail for sexual misconduct. We then meet another girl named Darkness, who spends her days being horny as fuck over being beat up. Yeah, just letting you know what feels like 10% of the show is just Darkness c***ing in her pants over imaginary scenarios. So anyway, Kazuma gets some skill points and decides to learn some skills from this thief girl. She teaches him steal, which randomly steals an item from an opponent based on luck. And with Cosma's super high luck stat, it changes to the ultra high level skill, Panty Ray, which he uses on Megamine too, because he wants to go to prison. Actually, wait a second, how old is Cosma? You just made it, motherfucker. <laughs> so afterwards, the town is attacked by Cabbage. Just roll with it. And Darkness shows off that she can take hits well because it makes her cut, even though she can't hit shit with her sword. So basically, the only one in the party who can reliably attack is Megamine, who can only attack once a day. I don't know why they thought, oh my god, they made a whole anime about that. So Megamine goes to release her pent up aggression by carpet bombing an abandoned castle every day. And it turns out King Louis XVI lived there and is pissed about his castle being blown up. So he sets up an anime confrontation by putting a death curse on Darkness, which makes her come again, but Aqua removes it immediately with her powers, which deletes the need for that arc to happen. In the next episode, because the gang doesn't qualify for stimulus checks, they take a quest to purify a lake, which Aqua, being a goddess of water, thinks will be easy. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. But since the gang are millennials and don't actually want to do real work, they put her in a cage to fend off monsters while she sits in the lake like a teabag. She gets attacked by alligators, but since the group wants her to die, they don't do anything. She ends up purifying the lake, but refuses to come out of the cage because she's too scared, and this is honestly where I thought the show was going to get a little more serious. The world is too big, too scary. I will never leave this cage again. <sighs> However, that lasts a total of 30 seconds because generic isekai protagonist number 27 shows up. He offers the gang to leave Cosma and join him, but since they aren't into simps, they are not interested. I wanna blow him up. Let me blow him up. Oh my dude, you just got... So since he thinks he's the main character of this anime, he challenges Cosmo to a fight, and Cosmo proves he's the ultimate isekai Chad by stealing his sword, knocking him out with it, then selling it for cheap. So Louis the 16th comes back to town and is pissed his arc got skipped over, and that Megamine is still bombing his castle. So he summons an army of undead, which is immediately killed by Megamine, though her perk 30 kicks in and she's out of the fight now. I'm tingly. That feels good. <laughs> She's the one you want, all right? I was just sitting at home watching cartoons, playing video games with my cousin, and she came in. So he fights darkness, but is affected by how horny she's getting, and Cosmo finds out he's weak to water. So he gets Aqua to flood the area, and Cosmo becomes Robespierre and takes his head. Are you sure anyone's gonna get these references to the French Revolution? Aqua then kills him with holy magic. The gang get a huge reward for defeating one of the Devil King's generals, but then are immediately put into debt again because they destroyed the town in the process. Yeah, basically the formula 
for this show is that Cosma's group does something really badass and cool, but they end up getting f***ed over for it. So in order to keep the IRS off their backs, the gang decide to go look for snow sprites, who are the most adorable things ever that the gang proceeds to brutally murder. Yeah, these are the good guys, right? So because of their evil killing spree, they draw out a monster called the Winter Shogun, who proceeds to kill Cosmo, which I was not expecting, I'll be honest. He then goes to the afterlife again and meets a new goddess waifu named Eris, who seems like she's a lot better at her job than Aqua. And the show kind of shifts tone here to where Cosmo starts reflecting on his life and how disappointing his circumstances have been. Eris then offers to reincarnate him back into the human world and guarantee him a good life. The show gets pretty heavy here, I gotta admit. And then we remember Aqua has resurrection magic that completely invalidates the meaning of death. So Cosma gets brought back to life and we have a nice little moment with the gang being very happy that Cosma isn't dead and Cosma realizing while things aren't ideal, they're still fun. What? I liked this scene and thought it was nice, so no jokes here. Everything doesn't have to be a joke. Next episode, Cosma and Aqua visit a shop that's run by an undead girl named Wiz, who definitely took her vitamins when she was alive. She reveals she's actually one of the Devil King's generals, showing the Devil King is a man of culture. However, simply because she's undead, Aqua immediately tries to murder her? Yeah, these are the good guys, and takes over her duties of guiding spirits to the afterlife. The possibility of medieval soul reapers existing besides, she also teaches Cosma the ah! skill, and then the gang gets a job exercising spirits from a noble's mansion. They find out they're actually in the movie Annabelle, and Cosma and Megamine are forced to run from the spirits while desperately trying to find a place to piss. Seriously, this show just doesn't give these guys a break. So Aqua ends up getting rid of all the spirits, but as it turns out, since she half-assed her job of guiding the spirits from the graveyard, she's the reason there are spirits in the mansion in the first place, so they don't earn any money from this job. But they end up getting to stay in the mansion, so all's well it ends well. So one day while walking around town, Cosma goes to a house of ill repute run by Succubi. But because this world is apparently rated PG-13, instead of doing what you'd expect they do, they give adventurers nice wet dreams in order to work out their aggressions. So Cosma signs himself up to get a dream and accidentally falls asleep in the bath. Thinking it's his dream, he proceeds to verbally assault darkness into doing what he wants because once again, he wants to see what the inside of a cell looks like. Wait a minute, so I know how old Cosma is, but how old is darkness? Well, well, well. How the turntables... So before Darkness pulls a teacher, it turns out Aqua caught the succubus before Cosmo could get his dream. In order to keep his identity as a man of culture hidden, he pretends to be under the control of the succubus and lets her escape. But before things can really get settled on that matter, the town is attacked by a Final Fantasy boss. So since Aqua and Megamine are the only ones with magic strong enough to hurt it, the gang is chosen to lead an attack on the fortress. We also have a semi-serious moment with Darkness, with her revealing she's a noble in charge of the area, and her real name is the result of drawing three words out of a hat. My real given name is La Latina Dustiness Ford. Seriously, it's weird how goofy and insane this show is, but how good they can do serious moments. But anyway, Final Fantasy attacks, but Aqua, Megamine, and Wiz end up taking it down, but that triggers a self-destruct sequence. The gang goes inside and ends up finding the power source, so after Wiz does a little <laughs> On Cosma, she gets the magic necessary to teleport it away. Then the gang team up and Megamine destroys the rest of it. So the gang ends up saving the day and earning a big reward and everything looks like it'll be just fine. Oh wait, Cosma is getting arrested because the exploding power source that they teleported away blew up some guy's mansion. Fuck the police. <laughs>